I found Cambridge quite daunting when I came here. Everybody seemed terribly clever, um, very self-confident. And I'd never been this far south in Britain, never worked this far south before, so it felt quite alien in many, many ways. Um, Newhall was in its new buildings just I arrived a week before term began and couldn't get in because the builders weren't out. So it was really touch and go for the building being ready for the start of term. Um, and I remember one Saturday, a few weeks into term, a knock at my bedroom door. It was Dame Rosemary Murray, the principal, distributing waste paper baskets. They'd just arrived. <laughs> I think my challenges were probably particular to science, where there were so few women particularly at the graduate level. Um, it was very much a male-orientated place through and through. And I felt as a woman that I couldn't rock boats too much. You know, I pushed for a few things, but you couldn't, couldn't rock a lot of boats. Um, I remember trying to get it agreed that we could have visitors in our rooms after, I think it was 10 p.m. was the, the curfew hour. Um, this was in college, um, unsuccessfully, of course. <laughs> there are a lot of memories, so it's a bit hard to, to sort them out. But um, some of the work I did out at the Radio Astronomy Observatory, um, some of it, a lot of it was very physical. Um, I could swing a sledgehammer by the time I left. Um, not one of the qualifications that normally goes with a PhD, but in my case I could. There was a very difficult phase where I was married and there was a small child. Um, husband wasn't in a position to help with any of the child minding, so it was all my responsibility. I worked part time for about 20 years. Um, when husband moved to a different part of the country, I'd write a begging letter to the nearest astronomy place saying, might you possibly have a part time job? And uh, so I keep trying. Um, quite a lot of determination and stubbornness, which means I keep trying. <laughs> I think they all go together. Uh, and that actually has been very necessary because women of my generation were expected to get married and not have careers. And so I was one of the women who was trying to combine raising a child with having a career. And quite a lot of breaking of taboos and conventions had to happen. And it's quite hard doing that. Cambridge certainly changed me. I recognised that I could cope with more things than I thought I could cope with. Um, I had learnt that working hard and diligently really did get you places, even in Cambridge. <laughs> I would encourage girls to do science. We need more girls in science. They're really good at it. Um, I know it's flying in the face of British social convention. Um, in other countries there aren't the same issues about women doing science, but our culture here tends to discourage women. We need the women to do science. It's as simple as that. I think one of the factors in my discovery of pulsars while I was a grad student here was that I was basically an outsider. Um, I'd come from the north and west of the country. Uh, I wasn't Southern English, I'd never worked in Southern England. And so, uh, besides being overawed by everybody's academic brilliance, I also felt an outsider. But I think that actually is what led to the discovery. So I believe that if you can increase the diversity of the people doing the science, you'll probably bring in more unexpected developments. Mm -hmm.